So this is going to be a special episode of Chicken Philosophy in a similar usage of the word as uh, how, for example, the Special Olympics are special. So very special, in other words. Um, so uh, just a bit of background, a couple things. One, I made a podcast out of the Carl Jung Black Books recitals. So if you want to go on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever podcast, and just search for Chicken Philosophy Jung, that'll take you there. Um, if you want to hear me but not see me. But on Spotify, there's the video. YouTube is really the best because I point to the corner and say, oh, well, for reference, you can click there. Anyway, enough about that. So this is going to be like a, like an off-brand B level sub uh, series, not even really series episode of uh, of chicken philosophy that's not part of the Black Books recitals. Uh, you probably know from the title that this is about the Arbitel. So we're talking about um, the usage of philosophy, as in. Uh, you're probably familiar with that British Turf Ladies book series uh, where she talks about the Philosopher's Stone and then they changed it to Sorcerer's Stone for the Americans. So that usage of the older usage of philosophy. Um, so not like, well, not Carl Jung, not um, Immanuel Kant, not uh, Ayn Rand. Anyway. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is, this is going to be, um, okay, so this guy, um, asked if I had any videos or episodes about the Arbitel, and so I googled that, and, uh, and I asked Joe Zabinski, because it seemed like the sort of thing he would be interested in, and, uh, and he wasn't that familiar with it either, so he's going to, like, do an analysis Joe Zabinski style, and I'm going to do an analysis me style, which is what you're watching right now. So I'll be uh, reciting that here in this episode and uh, doing my commentary, and uh, that'll help me organize my thoughts. And um, in the end, Joe Zabinski and I will, uh, will do a Zoom call and make it an episode of the Esoteric Nerd Podcast. So this is sort of a prequel to that. A little bit, a little bit crossovery, a little bit. In other words, it's like Esoteric Nerd behind the scenes, but on chicken philosophy. And if I'm not mistaken, that, that particular episode of Esoteric Nerd uh, will have a big plug for chicken philosophy at the beginning. So I think it's about 37 pages. So what I'm gonna do is read six pages per day, per day, for six days, starting now. Now, Arbitel of the magic of the ancients, the greatest study of wisdom. In all things, ask counsel of the Lord and do not thou think, speak, or do anything wherein God is not thy counselor. That's from Proverbs uh, 11. He that walketh fraudulently uh, revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So definitely don't listen to whoever wrote the Arbitel, because he's revealing secrets. If you want wisdom, you will never, ever get it. First rule of Fight Club, right? Um, yeah, he who speaks does not know, he who knows does not speak, thus saith Lao Tzu. So don't listen to Lao Tzu, similarly. All right, Arbitel of Magic, translated by Robert Turner. 1655, I think. It's a little blurry. Sorry about the angle here. Converted to Acrobat format by Benjamin Rowe, August 1999, which of course, you wanted that information, right? 
Arbitel of Magic, or the spiritual wisdom of the ancients, as well as, as well wise men of the people of God, as magi of the Gentiles, for the illustration of the glory of God and his love of mankind, with an E at, after the D in mankind. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, first of all, produced out of darkness into the light against all caco magicians and condemners of the gifts of God for the profit and delectation, delectation of all those who do truly and proudly love the creatures of God and do use them with thanksgiving to the honor of God and profit of themselves and their neighbors. Oh, okay. Translated into English by Robert Turner, London, 1655. Are we actually getting to it yet? Maybe that's like the formal long title. All right. So we're already on page four. The preface, okay, to the unprejudiced reader. This is page five. I'm almost finished with my work for today. Uh, as of the full, as the full of man made himself and all other creatures, like this guy, for example, uh, yes, as the full of man made himself and all other creatures subject to vanity, so by reason thereof, the most noble and excellent arts wherewith the rational soul was indeed are what, what the, the reason thereof the most noble what the hell was in butte in dude in dude i mean 1655 right okay some of these are old words oh they did something with that building all right haven't been to delhi in a few months uh six to be specific all right where was i uh hang on a minute right the rational soul the most excellent arts wherewith the rational soul was indeed are by the rusty canker of time brought into corruption for magic itself which the ancients did so divinely contemplate is scandalized with bearing the badge of all diabolical sorceries which art saith Miranda, Mirandula in parentheses, pouchy intelligent. I thought this was translated into English. Uh, multi, <coughs> multi reprehendent and secut canes ignotos semper alatrant. Translated into English, a eh? looks like you missed a spot there what's your name the translator few understood many reprehend many reprehend and as dogs bark and that's d-o-g-g-e-s b-a-r-k-e at those they know not so do a do d-o-e so do many condemn and hate the things they understand not Excuse me. Many men there are that abhor the very name and word Magus because of Simon Magus, who being not Magus, but goes, G-O-E-S. Are you dissing Simon Magus? What the fuck? Uh, that is familiar with evil spirits, usurped that title. Hmm. So are we an Orthodox Catholic? Magus, uh, whoever wrote this. All right. Uh, but magic and witchcraft are far different, differing sciences. Whereof, so 1655, they were putting a K in magic. All right. Uh, differing sciences, whereof Pliny, being ignorant, scoffeth thereat, 
which looks like threat with an E thrown in the middle after the TH. Just to take a break from the text for a moment, this is new. Not the purple line, but the, mostly the blue plastic is new. This was empty and then it was dirty before that and now it looks very nice and clean and blue. We got the parrots up here. Pretty cool. For Nira, saith Plenary, saith Pliny, in parentheses, who had the most excellent magicians of the East sent to him by Tyriadides, king uh, of Arme Armenia. Oh, I know that one. Um, who held that kingdom by him, found the art after long study and labor altogether ridiculous. Now, witchcraft and sorcery uh, are works done merely by the devil. Wanted to read that line here for obvious reason. Which with respect unto some covenant made with man, he acteth by men his instruments to accomplish his evil ends. <clears throat> of these, the histories of all ages, people, and countries, as also the Holy Scriptures, afford us sundry examples. All right, but magus, 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 but magus is a Persian word primitively, whereby is expressed such a one as is altogether conversant in things divine. As Plato affirmeth, the art of magic is the art of worshiping God. All right. Plato, the famous monotheist, right? And the Persians call their gods something in Greek, using Greek letters. I can't read Greek letters. Great translation there, Robert Julio, or whatever your name is, if that's your real name. Never mind. Hence, Apollonius saith that magus is either illegible Greek or illegible Greek. That's in bracket parentheses. All right. That is that magus is a name sometime of him that is a god by nature and sometimes of him that is in the service of God in which the latter sense it is taken in Matthew 2, 1, 2. Editor Edward, back in Majorda in the future, would you read Matthew 2, 1, 2 for us? Just the, uh, I don't know, whatever you've got there, whatever translation. Yeah, okay, that, that's fine. Um, anyway, when the wise men came to worship Jesus, and this is the first and highest kind, which is called divine magic. And these the Latins did entitle upientes, or wise men, for the fear and worship of God is the beginning of knowledge. These wise men the Greeks call philosophers. Burger. Excuse me. Excuse me again. And amongst the Egyptians, they were termed priests. The Hebrews termed them Kabbalistos, prophets, scribes, and Pharisees. And amongst the Babylonians, they were differenced by the name of Chaldeans. And by the Persians, they were called magicians. And one speaking of Sos. Sosthenes, 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 I don't know, one of the ancient magicians, of course, useth the words et, serv, et verum deum merita magistate 
pro sequitur and Angelos Ministros Dei said viri, how long is this going to be in Latin? Uh, Ejus venerationi novit assistere idem demonas prodit terrenos vagus humanitatis inimicos sos Oh, all right, that's the end of the Latin. All right. Mm -hmm. Ascribeth the due majesty to the true God and acknowledgeth that his angels are... Moving on to page six. Does it go through the whole page? Yes. All right. Um, yes. Ministers and messengers which attend the worship of the true God. He also hath delivered that there are devils earthly and wandering and enemies to mankind. So that the word magus of itself imports a contemplator of divine and heavenly sciences. Perhaps even you, mm -hmm. dear viewer. But under the name magic with a K in 1655. All right. I didn't know that. It's... It's new to me. All right. Are all unlawful arts comprehended as necromancy and witchcraft and such arts which are affected by combination with the devil and whereof he is a party? You gotta fight, done for your right. These witches and necromancers are also called male malefici or venifici, sorcerers or poisoners, of which names witches are rightly called. By the way, I don't agree with what he's saying a lot of the time, but I'm reading it just to clarify. I think witches are cool. But anyway, this sounds to me just to throw in a little bit of commentary, since this is chicken philosophy after all. It's reminding me of two things. One, this, uh, specifically the, um, the, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker trying to convince the uh, Christian Bale uh, Batman that he's cool. And the other thing it makes me think of is someone trying to, well, I mean, yeah, trying to trying to say, hey, magic is divine, man. You know, like people say magic is evil, but it's not. It's holy. And I get that. I resonate with that. I understand where he's coming from. It's just some of the specifics, like why you got to blame the famous Gnostic sage? Why you got to blame the witches? You're doing a little too much cozying up to the authorities with your... Uh, explaining that magic isn't evil and they're going to barbecue you anyway, depending on what century it is. All right, end of commentary. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, rightly called, who without the art of magic do indeed use the help of the devil himself uh, to do mischief, practicing to mix the powder of dead bodies with other things by the help of the devil prepared, and at other times to make pictures of wax, clay, or otherwise, parentheses, as it were, sacramentalizer, sacramentaliter, and parentheses, to affect those things which the devil by other means bringeth to pass. By the way, we're still in the the preface or the prologue or whatever. We haven't actually gotten to whatever this document is all about, but we're getting to know the author a little bit, or at least the prefacator, the pro prologuer, the whatever. All right. Such were, and to this day partly, if not altogether, are the corruptions which have made odious the very name of magic with a K. As translated in 1655, I, I, I've already forgotten. 
I wonder when the original document was written. All right. Uh, having chiefly sought as the matter of all impostures is to counterfeit the highest and most noble part of it. The second kind of magic is astrology with an IE, um, which judgeth the events of things to come, natural and humane, maybe, or human with an E, one or the other, by the motions and influences of the stars upon the lower elements by them observed and understood. We all know what astrology is. Philo Judaeus affirmeth some, uh, I, 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 it's not really uh, product placement if nobody's paying you, is it? Does it say Tata? No, it just says Starbucks. It doesn't say Tata anywhere on it, but the guy spelled my name correctly, which is unusual in India. Anyway, uh, where were we? Philo Judaeus affirmeth that by this part of, of magic or astrology, together with the motions of the stars and other heavenly bodies, Abraham found out the knowledge of the true God while he lived in Chaldea. Qui contemplations, what? Qui contemplatione, I think we know what contemplation means. Uh, I just translate it into English, dude. Why you gotta be so like that? It's stupid. Sorry, translated into English, my hindquarters. Creaturarum cognovit creatorum, parentheses, saith Damascan, and parentheses, who knew the creator by the contemplation of the creature. Ah, is that the English? Well, thank you for, the, for translating it for me after the fact. Josephus reporteth of Abraham. Josephus uh, came a little while after Abraham, but I'll keep reading. Josephus reported of Abraham that he instructed the Egyptians in arithmetic and astronomy. who before Abraham's coming unto them knew none of these sciences. All right, I'll just keep reading. Abraham sanctitate and sapientia omnium prestantissimus primum caldigi. It's no, it's a real wonder I've never heard of uh, this document before, or read it, or studied it. It's, isn't it interesting that of all my teachers, no one suggested looking into it? I wonder why that is. I'm gonna keep reading, sorry. I'm only, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit of an asshole when it comes to certain things, and very disrespectful when it comes to uh, most things, I guess you could say. It's, it's sort of a compliment. I'm disrespectful of myself, most of all. All right. Mm-hmm. Where were we in the middle of this Latin paragraph? Okay. Hmm. Diende foinices demum Egyptios sacerdotes Astrologia and Divina de Doerit. Abraham, the holiest and wisest of man, did first teach the Chaldeans, then the Phoenicians, lastly the Egyptian priests, astrology and divine knowledge. Ah, the English translation. I should just skip the Latin parts and read the English translations. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fucking cheesecake, it's a bomb. It's fun down in Goa. There's a, you know, Portuguese. So there's like the Church of Bomb Jesus. Like 
B O M, like like good Jesus. You know, I think that's what that means, right? Um, without doubt, Hermes Trismegistus. I know him. The name of my uh, late great sanctuary in Los Angeles. That divine Phoenician, that divine magician and philosopher who. Parentheses, as some say, and parentheses, lived long before Noah, attained to much divine knowledge of the Creator through the study of magic and astrology with an IE, as his writings testify with an IE. The third kind of magic containeth the whole philosophy of nature, which bringeth to light the innermost virtues and extracteth them out of nature's hidden bosom with an e after the m to humane or human with an e use virtues in centro century latentes virtues hidden in the center of the center Ooh, i was just talking to someone about the center of the center hmm all right. <clears throat> According to uh, the chemists uh, of this sort were Albertus, Arnoldus de Vila, Noza, Nova, Ar uh, that's Arnold of the New House, if you're translating it, um, or New Villa, whatever, Raymond, Bacon, and others, and T. I think that says what? Um, the magic these men professed is thus defined. Magia est cones, conexio a viro sapiente agentium per naturam cum patientibus sibi congruenter Respondentibus ut inde opera pro deant non sine corum admiratione qui causam ignorant. Let's hear the English. Magic is the connection of natural agents and patients answerable each to other, wrought by a wise man to, excuse me, the bringing forth of such effects as are wonderful to those that know not their causes. Cheers. <clears throat> 